rikspolischefen som i sin tur beordrade åklagare och polis att agera. When the responsible prosecutor was called up to the department in Stockholm uh, the spring 2006 and he have been telling that this to the Swedish national television later on that uh, there was mentioned a threat of WTO sanctions against Sweden and in the first hand maybe you about US putting Sweden on the, this this thing called the priority watch list. Ja det kan man läsa i ett brev som Elia som fick i mars. Här bekräftas också att USA pressat på. Brevet skickades av John Malcolm på Hollywoods mäktiga lobbyorganisation MPA. Han påminner om deras möte i höstas. Vi diskuterade ingående organisationen Pirate Bay verksam i Sverige. Som ni säkert vet har den amerikanska ambassaden enträget bett Sveriges regering att agera mot Pirate Bay. Jag vill återigen uppmana er att utöva ett inflytande för att få de rättsvårdande myndigheterna i Sverige. So it really got to a high level. The Minister of Justice were accused of committing crimes in the raid. Because it's illegal for a minister in Sweden to tell the police exactly what they should do. Efter statssekreterare Dan Eliasson uppgifterna om att Sverige utsatts för hot om handelssanktioner. Jag vet att USA har synpunkter på effektiviteten i vårt system när det gäller upphovsrätt. Och att om inte Sverige och andra länder följer sina internationella åtaganden så finns det sanktionsmekanismer i USA, det vet jag. Och det har påtalats från amerikansk sida. Det här har framförts. Jag vet att det har förekommit diskussioner om eh, att eh, om internationella regelverket när det gäller handel och upphovsrätt inte följs av Sverige och andra länder, då finns det en sanktionsmekanism. Tycker du att det ingår i dina arbetsuppgifter att, rap att rapportera till en lobbyist från Hollywood? Jag rapporterar inte till någon lobbyist. Jag tror att det är en skrift på den svenska svenska lagen. Directly after the raid, the MPAA sent out a press release saying basically um, mission succeeded. And uh, that also shows very clear, I think, that the mission was not convicting people. It was sabotaging. Yeah, but we're online again after a few days. Nobody thought we were actually going back online and that was like the biggest question. Are you actually coming back online? And I was very clear that we are coming back online if you stop calling me. <laughs> the obvious goal of the goal of the police was to uh, get the Pirate Bay offline and get the, the internet supplier PRQ offline. But they failed miserably. After three days, the servers were back up and uh, most of the backups restored. So the uh, site worked perfectly. And uh, about a week after that, Everything was back up 100%. Spectacular success for us. <laughs> When the raid happened, we got an enormous amount of media attention. So it definitely helped. Uh, the days after the raid, we had uh, doubled our visitor numbers. And uh, also it uh, awakened the debate about file sharing in Sweden. I mean, most, most people in Sweden feel, feel pissed about the use of, inter of uh, trade sanction threats to override national law. Yeah, a lot of different uh, youth groups to the parties uh, were active in our demonstration to show the support for the file sharing in Sweden. I think we had four different parties attending uh, the demonstration and also three of them were speaking uh, on behalf of their party at the demonstration uh, along with representative of uh, the Piracy Bureau and the Pirate Bay, and also the newly formed Pirate Party also got a lot. They doubled their members, member numbers in two days. Everyone in Sweden somehow knows about the Pirate Bay today. Uh, Pirate Bay, Bush Torrent, uh, and I also use uh, DC. To download music. It's from the Pirate Bay mostly, but then it's the Mini Nova. Uh, I use Pirate Bay, uh, a place called Karagarga. The Pirate Bay and Internet.
I have gotten a lot of support from the rest of the ISP community and a lot of new customers calling us up and saying, hey, we heard about the raid. We want to help you. We want to move our co-location to your place. Because they know that we stand for uh, freedom of speech and we would like to defend it. Väljarna opinionsundersökningar visar att en majoritet av dem tycker att den här lagen mot fildelning är dum. De betraktar det som en allemansrätt ungefär som vi äldre säger på lingonplockning och svampplockning på. Every single political party in Sweden suddenly started to have a realistic take on file sharing. Quite suddenly realized that uh, file sharers are also voters. Most parties said things that were actually quite very positive towards file sharing, but at the same time they couldn't say like, okay, we take away the copyright laws. The whole thing is far from ended, it will go on for probably several years in Sweden. Obviously just shot themselves in the foot, because now for it, it will be politically impossible for them to, to take, take an action against the Pirate Bay or something similar in Sweden again. It was kind of quite an eye-opener for them that there's such a, such a large uh, base of popular support for for file sharing and the, the general copyright issues. Now the site is virtually impossible to take down because we have implemented the redundancy everywhere. So if something goes down now, like for instance a new raid or something, we're going to be back up in a couple of hours instead of a couple of days. The joke is over, smell the smoke from all around! Piratbeam was born from a very loose group of people communicating on the IRC chat channels. We were basically into doing different kinds of playful internet projects and uh, reappropriating the term of Piratbeerun by cutting away the anti uh, was one of those like playful impulses. So we just did it. And, uh, People had very different backgrounds, it was a very loose group. Everyone felt that this was something new and unexplored, but at the same time something that we knew would definitely grow in importance for several years ahead. What they did was to turn the public debate and actually give public opinion a counterpoint. Where there had only been the copyright industry's point of view before, there was now a counterpoint. So when the copyright industry had their voice in, in the public media, there was also the Pirate Bureau's voice, always. And I mean, that was unthinkable just five years ago. As for Piotr, maybe it represents some kind of new, new wave of criticism against copyright law, when like the first wave was, was more legalistic, more based on American universities, in fact. Many people think we have like an office and uh, staff and such things, but we don't. We don't have a, a fixed location.